G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video. Now this video today is very significant for me because it marks my very, very first FIA official race. So there are two modes in Gran Turismo Sport, there's your daily races and uh, FIA races and then FIA races has Nations Cup and Manufacturers Cup. Uh, this is the last Nations Cup race for the last of the previous season. Uh, I don't really care about the championship, I just wanted to jump in and have a go here. And we're, it's in Group 4 at Autodromo Lago Maggiore. So I'm not going to go in and explain deeply about the championship. It's basically FIA races. You race in a championship set by the developers and you earn points based on your position. Most points you win, essentially. You, this is how you qualify for World Tour. Uh, that's of course if you win top split races, which I'm firmly, definitely not in. But you join me in the qualifying session, which didn't go off to a great start as there, I accidentally break a little bit too late and slam into this Porsche here, so that loses all my speed. And then later in the lap, see the Porsche just breaks a little bit too far to the left and ends up on the grass and bins himself, so uh, that ruins his lap. And that of course was the last opportunity. This of course is the last opportunity of a uh, qualifying lap. And then later on in the lap, coming into turn 11, I'm getting overtaken here by the Mercedes, and I was not... I was not too impressed by that because we're in qualifying, we're not racing for crying out loud. And then he got he got in front of me and then was going really slow, so I had to overtake him again uh, going into the final corner. Um, and you see, I ended up doing a very poor job qualifying in 13th out of its 20 or 19 or something, 13th on the grid. About 2.1 seconds off the top time, 204.695, eventually actually down in 14th place as someone overtakes me completing their lap but uh, all in all it did not go well but I did two races around here we're just going to quickly recap um, quickly recap the first race uh, so group four um, you could choose any group four car for this combination but I decided to go for the Toyota 86 uh, I've driven this car previously and I think it's a very solid car maybe not the best on straights but cornering it's very good it doesn't oversteer that much um, understeer you know, you don't really feel it, it's fine. Uh, so it's an overall pretty good car to drive. So that's what I've gone for because uh, I want to be comfortable first and foremost. It's probably not the fastest car, but that's what we're going to go for anyway. But this is the beginning of the first race, of the first lap. So we're going to, you know, move through this race pretty quickly. But this race here is the very first FIA race I've ever done. Coming into turn one, I've got someone going up the inside for a very late lunge there. And you see it gets a little bit awkward as I try to catch oversteer and we make a bit of awkward contact but uh, the Ferrari doesn't quite hang it around the outside but you see I've now lost a second to the Jaguar and I've got myself a one second penalty so you know uh, it's immediately not going too well um, you know a bit of I get that turn one you know everyone's bunched up but I think I do personally I try to take it really tentative into turn one usually so I don't you know end up making any mistakes We'll go up the inside of the Jaguar here, however, going through turn 5. Uh, he's probably on a different tyre compound, given how much extra grip I had through there. Uh, on the beginning of the next lap, coming out of turn 4, we'll serve the penalty. We did catch up to the group a little bit, but uh, had to serve the penalty, so now we're put back here. Ferrari moves past, a bit later in the lap we catch uh, up all the ground to that group again, go up the inside of the Ferrari, and then we've got a pair of cars serving penalties here. Ferrari moves through, has quite good momentum from the previous corner. Are we going to get ahead of this Honda? I don't think so, no. The Ferrari just kind of parks, parks it on the apex and uh, stops me from going past. A little bit later in the lap, I we managed to go three abreast going into turn 11 here. Who's going to come out on top? I'm on the very inside. Ferrari's on the outside. The amazing bank nature of this corner really lends itself to being on the inside. And you see that I prevail. Being on the very far inside, I managed to get double overtake here as we find ourselves up in 11th. Uh, soon to be 10th as we've got the first pit stop of the race, the yellow Mercedes who overtook me in qualifying moves into the pit lane there. I find myself up in 10th coming into turn 11. I just get absolutely bundled out of the way by my fellow Toyota 86 driver and then lose three positions back down into 14th. So not going well. End of lap 5 I managed to bring it into the pit lane eventually and go onto the hard tyre. So this race did have a tyre requirement. You had to use the hard tyre for at least one lap. 
and I think in this case I decided to go in on the end of lap 5, you know, start on the softs, and then go in the end of lap 5, uh, change to the hard, and do one lap on the hard, and then come back in and finish the race on softs, because the hard tyre is the slowest tyre, you don't want to spend more time than necessary on that tyre going slower than anyone else on medium or soft tyres, uh, but as a result of my two stop very close together, I, I am firmly in 19th position at this point. I catch up one position going past this McGann here, but I'm now on my last set of tyres to the end, so every you know, every lap here I'm gaining. Every time someone goes into it, the pits from now on, I, I will gain the position provided I'm close enough to them. A couple of people go in the pits, a couple of people come out of the pits. We find ourselves near this yellow Mercedes again, who overtook us in qualifying. We seem to be spending this entire race session just stuck to each other. And there's that uh, Jaguar I overtook on the first lap in turn five. Managed to go past him as he gets a poor run out of turn two. Uh, Coming into the final sector of lap 10, it took us quite a while to get an overtake done on this guy. We managed to uh, outbreak him going into turn 14, which is, I'm very strong, I'm, I just happen to be very strong into turn 14, I know how to break and trail break and park on the apex beautifully for that corner. We managed to finally get the move on that guy. A little bit later in the race we got a half a second penalty which we served, that was for track limits. And then we've got a Porsche that moved past us, and unfortunately, uh, that demotes us into 14th, which is where we finished. I actually did run out of fuel as well. I know we skipped through that quite quickly, but I hope you kind of were able to follow that race there. But there I am, looking at my Donut King car in absolute misery, uh, finishing 14th, which was my car number. So DR probably won't change, but it was fine for a first race. Could be worse, you know, so... Uh, I had no choice but to go again in the next session, at one hour and 20 minutes later. And this is the beginning of the qualifying session, I believe. I have one poor chap uh, in 16th place on the grid there, who's stuck on hard tyres. But we managed to end, exit the pits now. I took a very different approach. Uh, you saw in my previous qualifying session that I uh, tried to get a slipstream from cars ahead, but it ended up imploding. So I decided to fuel burn a little bit, find myself completely isolated on the track. Uh, do not want to get myself any COVID-19 related fines, so I have successfully done that. But this is my qualifying lap now, so we'll go through a lap braking just on the end of the fence into turn one. Trail brake into turn one nicely, a little burst of acceleration, and then we want to keep it really close to the apex. Not quite the perfect line through turn two there, but not to worry. Turn three... I go out wide to get a better angle through turn three, but I think I ended up losing time from that, but uh, that's the way I took it. A little more burst of acceleration, and then we slow it right down. Brake a lot earlier than you think for turn four, because it kind of goes over a crest downhill off camber. So you go really wide if you do not scrub enough, enough speed off there. Braking just on the end of the kerb on the left-hand side into turn five, or a bit after the end of the kerb. Get onto the power nice and early. If you stop it dead on the apex, you can get onto the power pretty much instantly and take a lovely line up here. Breaking into the S is now about halfway along that curb. We break and turn in and take each apex nicely all over the curbs. Pair out to the outside and then these two corners here, pretty much a straight line. You can get the car right on top of the curbs there, but not too far. You do not want to get penalties. We are, of course, using FIA track limits which are a bit stricter than daily races but no penalties so far so let's hope we keep it that way turn 11 breaking just on the end of that green fence just after the 50 meter board third gear through there on the power really early there using that banking of the corner to get the car around and uh, up the hill now through the sweeping s's easily flat out in a group four car especially this one that turns quite well all over that second curb there we're going to come into sector three and see that we're 1.2 seconds up at this point on I don't know what time, actually, that was a pretty stupid thing to say, because I don't know what time that is. Uh, but we'll come through the final sector now. Absolutely nice line through there. Maybe on the power a little bit early. Had to get off the power once again. But not to worry. Over to the right-hand side for the final quarter. Break on the 50 in fourth gear. Turn in really early. You want to use that curb, but uh, I didn't quite use enough of it. And I ended up a little bit wide on the exit. We'll lose a slight bit of time from there. But overall, it's a good lap. We'll cross the line with a 204.0. Straight to pole position, baby, by nine tenths off Creto. Uh, I wanted to go again, but ended up sliding wide at turn one. So that marks the end of the qualifying session. 
uh, no one was able to match me. But that marks the end of the qualifying session, which marks the start of the actual race session. Please do enjoy the intro. Absolutely beautiful stuff from Polyphony there. I do hope you enjoyed their little musical intro there, but we are greeted by the grid and my Donut King pink car on pole position. There I am. Now, this race was a race between two. It was myself and Creto here in P2. Now, this race really highlights the importance of strategy, or I guess the sort of different strategies that can work, because Creto took a completely different strategy than, than me. Um, personally, I had a look at the replay of the previous race to see what the leader did. The leader did two five lap stints on soft and then did the last two laps on hard, which I, I think makes more sense uh, because you end up spending too much time on soft tyres when you do the hards for only one lap. Uh, so we take advantage of when the hard tyres are grippiest for two laps because they last a little bit longer. But that's the strategy I've gone for here. We'll see when we move to a replay angle, as I did include quite quite a fair chunk of Credo's replay that um, he's actually on hard tyres so he started the race on hard which probably explains why I've, why I've pulled away a little bit you see coming into turn two I think he just drops extra gear he just got out of his rhythm a bit and that just sort of locked up his tyres a bit and he ended up spinning it on the apex of turn two gets lunged by a couple of other cars so that just moves him off the pack a bit you see he's sucked down here in fourth uh, end of lap four he had one car go in so he's promoted up to third and he's in the slipstream of the fellow Toyota 86 driver. Moving to the end of lap 5 now, you see I'm still in the lead, trundling around nicely. Got quite consistent lap times on the right hand side, you see. Uh, end of lap 5, I'm bringing it around to the pits now. You see, Credo just blocks the other Toyota driver from going into the pits as well. And he has to react to allow him to go in. And that promotes Credo up into the lead at this point here. So. I've taken a stop, everyone around him has taken a stop, Credo has not, and you see he's going through turn 2 now, I'm only just exiting the pit lane, I'm 6 seconds behind at this point, but of course Credo hasn't pitted, he's due for a pit stop, which he does at the end of lap 6 here, you see he brings it around to the pits, he comes in, so he spent 6 laps on those hard tyres, uh, and then this is my perspective, I've left Credo's replay down there so you can kind of keep track of his progress, as I continue my race here. See, I'm in turn one now. Coming through turn two, we'll see the gap uh, to me once he exit the pits. It's going to be quite a large gap, I think. So there he goes, exit the pits. He's in fifth place at this point, so it might look like that he's chosen the wrong strategy here, but of course he only has to stop once. Most of the other field uh, is, is stopping two times, including myself. Coming into turn seven now, uh, sorry, turn 11 of lap 7, I'm firmly ahead, comfortably in the lead, but we move back to Credo's race now. He's coming up to a little bit of traffic now, so he's got the run on both the cars ahead. And again, not known for its top speed, but um, in the slipstream it's probably okay. He has to bundle his way past there. Quite, quite a good move, actually. He gets up the inside and slots in between the two other cars. But this fighting is losing time. You see up the front here, uh, I'm going around smoothly, no traffic at all. Uh, back to Credo now. See, he's now got to get past this Toyota 86 driver. So Credo is on brand new soft tyres. So I'm assuming that these cars are, that these opponents are, quite far into their stints, uh, based off, you know, their their pace relative to Credo. And there was a little bit of contact going through uh, one of the turns of Credo there. And once again, cross back to me. I'm just in the clear air, absolutely loving it out there. See how close Credo is to the back of the Toyota 86, and once again, uh, losing out on the straight, and again, very much corner-oriented car. Coming into turn one, looking up the inside, the game is there, not quite on, wasn't quite able to get the car up inside far enough. 
and he ended up losing more time. So just keep an eye on this because this is important. You see, Credo is stuck in a bit of a battle that he probably doesn't want to be stuck in, given that he's trying to race myself up in the lead. Um, but he is unfortunately losing time here. Game is just exceeding track limits at some point through the first sector, probably on the entry to turn three and earning himself a half second penalty, which he'll serve on the next lap coming into turn five. Just moves, just goes into the back of him at that point. Uh, Game is not happy about that, swerves back over for a little bit of contact with him to try and avoid him from going through. But yes, uh, a, maybe a slightly dirty move, but I do think Gamers was on the back foot a bit there. Of course, um, Credo did have his new soft tyres available to him, and Gamers probably was a little bit further into his stint. Coming back to me, once again, smoothly through turn 11 of lap 8. See, I'm firmly ahead at this point. So, end of lap 10, that's the end of my soft stint. You see down in the tyres in the bottom left, uh, the fronts are more than 50% worn. So we're going to move into the pits. We're 13 seconds ahead of Credo at this point. So let's reverse of earlier. Credo's coming into the final corner. We'll keep taps on, keep, keep tabs rather, on my uh, pit stop progression as Credo rounds the final corner now. So from here to the end, there I am exiting my pit box now. Teleport to the end of the pit lane. Flashback to me. I just come out ahead of Credo about two sec, 1.5 seconds rather, ahead of Credo at this point. But I'm on hard tyres. Credo is on slightly worn soft tyres. Um, in terms of grip, we're probably fairly similarly matched to each other in terms of grip. So uh, maybe he would have a slight advantage given that he's on a soft compound and I'm on a hard compound. But we're going to follow from here to the end of the race actually. So. It was interesting enough to, to sort of include the last two laps here, so we're going to focus on myself first and foremost, of course, uh, selfish as always I am, <laughs> uh, but we'll keep an eye on Credo's progression, of course I've left his little replay cam on the screen as well so we can focus on both of our driving, hopefully you can just see his telemetry inputs there, because that's what I find interesting. That's what I find good about this game, actually, that you can see everyone's telemetry inputs all the time because they've integrated into the HUD. Very interesting of them to do. But mainly what we're going to keep an eye on is the gap between myself and Credo now. So the start, or, or, or the, the, yeah, the first half of, of, of lap 11 has been fairly similar, about 1.1 seconds ahead. So Credo will be getting slipstream effect. He did gain, actually, towards the end of that straight as well. But, uh, yeah, he did, he did gain, actually, about a tenth of a second. He's 1.0 seconds behind at this point. So I do have to keep an eye on that. I don't want to, you know, begin to make mistakes, especially because I've spent 10 laps on soft tyres and then gone straight to hard tyres. So pretty much the two opposite ends of the racing tyre spectrum. Uh, I guess there are super softs, but we never really use those in this game, ever, even though it has them. But hard, hard and soft are pretty much the most drastic, uh, most drastic, you know, grip difference in the racing category that we use in the game. So I do have to be careful with that. Um, of course, harder tyres, the car is going to slide more on corner exit. It's going to take longer to brake. It's going to understeer more. Um, and the car will feel less stable as well because the tyres aren't really pushing into the road. Coming to turn one, Credo does go for a little bit of a dive bomb there, but it wasn't quite he wasn't quite able to pull it off and he ends up wide on the exit of turn two and he's not able to get onto the power quite as early as he probably would have liked. Flashback to me, uh, 1.15 seconds ahead of Credo at this point, get a lovely line through turn four. And then we flash back to Credo, it gets a massive oversteer moment, starting to feel the effects of those extremely worn soft tires that he spent half the race on. And he's not quite able he's not quite able to keep onto the back of me. He just drops off a bit, 1.2 seconds here. But uh, coming into turn 11, we'll flash back to Credo. He goes for quite a similar sort of run as he did into turn 1. Obviously trying to make something occur through the final lap. And I, I can't disrespect that because I think it's okay. Final lap, you might as well go for it. What have you got to lose? But unfortunately, just he, he's not quite able to get close enough. Coming into the final sector now, let's see if we can keep our first place. It's been a fairly convincing race so far, although I will admit, when I was in the race and came out of my final pits and saw Credo one second behind, I was like, oh my goodness, how did he do that? Uh, of course, having a look at the replay, he's done that by only going in for one stop. But you can see just how close Credo was, really, as we round the final corner now. It's going to be a fairly 
uh, well, I was going to say convincing victory, not really. Maybe if Credo wasn't stuck fighting, he probably would have been ahead of me even, because it's only seven tenths in the end, uh, which is what I was going to say before. So you can easily see how a one stop versus a two stop could work for this race. And I honestly do think Credo, he would have seriously been contending for the race win there, given that he had not been stuck fighting uh, in that sort of little pack he was in between, you know, sort of the near the start of the race laps, sort of four, five, six, seven, vying for positions two, three, four, and five. Uh, but you see, it did come to smoke screen in the end. Pole position, fastest lap, a clean race, a three star victory. It's my 28th win on the game. So, you know, on this account, that is. Um, 153 points for the Ender Nations Cup. So, um, I do hope you found that interesting. It was my first FIA race, so I think I did okay, given the circumstances. Um, a big shout out to Credo as well. If you are, if you do happen to find this somewhere, a uh, big shout out to you for providing a good race and honestly catching me blindsided by your strategy. Uh, one stop versus the two stop. Very good. Maybe you managed that. You, you may have sort of you may, you may have got me for the race win given that you had not been fighting in that pack so it's easy to see how different strategies can work for the same race and I think that is definitely an interesting aspect of Gran Turismo here but that's going to be the end of this one do hit the like button if you enjoyed and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this I do have plenty of videos lined up for the next few weeks or so but that's going to be the end of this one today and that means that is it from me so once again I do thank you very much for watching see you later